Welcome back once again. It is time for the golden age of DC Comics 365 days where I take this well-loved hardcover coffee table book given to me about two decades ago by one of my best friends as a gift. It, it's been surfing my coffee table ever since and it's a great excuse to have comic book shop style conversations the kind that we used to have you know every any given wednesday and um this is a 2004 abrams publication written and curated by uh les daniels chip kid and um and jeff spear you can find a link in the description to the amazon page where you can get your own copy play along at home, or makes a great gift for the geek in your life. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I am blessed, truly blessed and honored and grateful that you are here with us right now. The Golden Age of DC Comics runs between 1938 to 1955, the Silver Age from 1956 until 1970, the Bronze Age, I'm a Bronze Age baby, from 1970 until 1985, and the Copper Age begins in 1985. Um, around this time in the show, I will always take a, a moment to give you and us the what I call the escapism caveat. Activism, it's very important. We live in a world that needs help. People in this world need help. Activism has its space, it has its place, it has its purpose. Yet it's being it's it's in, been encroaching into our fandoms and our fictions um, for a couple of years now, and it's uh, pretty obnoxious. To and this is my opinion. It's my opinion, and yours may differ. And what goes better with a, a coffee table talk and a coffee table book at a coffee table? Some freshly brewed coffee. Mm. Pull up a chair, grab a cuppa, and join us. But activism, you know, needs to um, maybe stay out of fictions like comic books and sports. Escapism is, is really needed. We need escapism to forget about the worries of this world just for a few moments in a day it's it's that's what it's there for you know root for the home team go to a distant planet and fight an evil empire with a laser sword be in the, be in some kind of mythic forest along with uh, different denizens of, of of different species that used to be on this earth and fight uh, grand evils and big bads be a vampire slayer you know just this is your what we need to forget the Earth's problems just for a few moments. And escapism is really needed, just as much as activism. But does activism respect escapism? No, it doesn't. It takes advantage of it, and it, it disrespects us. And it will use harmful labels, too, if we don't go along with what they're selling. Their activists have literally encroached in our spaces. And... Um, Maybe it's time for them to stick to their space and respect our space. Do we respect activism? Yes. Do I? Yes. Do activism? Do activists respect us? No, they don't. They really don't. And um, that's the active. That's the escapism caveat. And we're getting back to business. So I take this 365 days book for its intended purpose. We open the book to today's date. We look at some comic book art. We read the blurb, and then we talk about comic books. And we're going to be talking about comic books every day for the rest of the year. Here we go. Let's do it. The book is cracked open. Hello. It is July the 12th, and I hope you are doing awesome and having a great day. And know that I am grateful for you. You're tuning in right now. If you love comics as much as I do, you're at the right channel at the right time, and we're doing the right thing. Talking about comic books. This is from Girls Love Stories, issue number 15, cover date January, February of 1952. I can never marry him. It's no use. I, I've got to leave now. Before I hurt his career anymore. Oh, the light is coming in. 
from the half-drawn shade. The tears are rolling down her cheeks from the decision she has to make. Let's read the blurb and talk a bit more about girls' love stories. A small town is buzzing with scandal, and an innocent woman realizes that explaining will only make it worse. They won't believe us. And so, the misguided spirit of self-sacrifice that animated so many comic book sob stories. Della Martin decides to hit the road to protect her man. Things will work out. However, even though the story is entitled Forbidden Future. Let's look at this once again. It looks like a Roy Lichtenstein, doesn't it? We're going to talk about Lichtenstein in a little bit. But first, let's talk about girls' love stories. It, I'm going to read this from the wiki. Yes, the wiki. And um, let's go. The girls' love story was an American romance comic book magazine published by DC Comics in the United States. It started in 1949 as DC's first romance title. It ran for 180 issues, ending with the November-December 1973 issue. Wow, that's a 24-year publication history. That's pretty decent. The stories covered such topics as girls worrying about getting a man or Marrying out of pressure, not love. Wet my whistle. All this love is making my, my mouth dry. <laughs> Some of the early covers were photographs. The book's initial tagline was, True to life! <laughs> um... Yeah, and images taken from girls' love stories have been used in some of Roy Lichtenstein's work. Yes! I mean, that's our history. I mean, I love having uh, grown up uh, my, with my mom's sense of art. She would have art books everywhere. I, I grew up an only child with a single working mom. And she'd had all these books. This is pre-internet, remember. This is the 20th century, back in the Dark Ages. And um, we had these the Time Life books of the Gunslingers, the Ancient Egypt, the Ancient Greeks, the Ancient Romans, the Mesopotamians, you know, uh, just uh, Ancient America. And we also had art books like um, Paul, Paul Cezanne, um, Rubens, uh, the Dutch Masters. I mean, I had I grew up steeped in Renaissance art and in different, just and just in, with an appreciation, especially for the Dutch masters. Have you ever been to the AI in Chicago? Um, they have a great room of Dutch masters. I can get lost in there for just in that room for an hour or two and just be gobsmacked. But um, but having an appreciation for art history, I can identify something such as this image as being kind of inspired or even used by Roy Lichtenstein. Who is Roy Lichtenstein? You might have seen Lichtenstein's work. It's that type of pop art, usually with a, a female protagonist or, or subject and a, and a word bubble and some kind of, it's a one panel, uh, a zoom in of, of one aspect of the panel and usually the emotional state of the person. Um, and it was pop art of the 1960s. And Roy, Lichtenstein, Roy Fox Lichtenstein was an American pop artist during the 1960s, along with Andy Warhol, Jasper Johns, and James Rosenquist, among others. He, this is from the wiki. Um, he became a leading figure in the new art movement. His work defined the premise of pop art, popular art, through parody. Inspired by comic strips, Lichtenstein produced precise compositions that documented while they parodied, often in a tongue-in-cheek manner. His work was influenced by popular advertising and the comic book style. His artwork was considered to be disruptive. Uh, he described pop art as not American painting, but actually industrial painting. 
seeing that comic books were basically vehicles to sell advertisements for corporate magazines. You know, his um, his paintings were exhibited at the Leo Castelli Gallery in New York City. Wham! and Drowning Girl are regarded as Lichtenstein's most famous work. Um, Wham! is um, is a famous one about a um, two fighter pilots, uh, two jet fighters, and one of them destroying the other. And um, let's see, I was going to say one of these. And some of these were, were definitely... Okay, Wham! adopts a panel from Irv Novik from the Star Jockey story of issue number 89 of DC Comics' All-American Men of War from 1962. And um, so he basically is just... And then there's Drowning Girl, and we were, it's, the, it's, a, it's a close-up of a girl in water drowning. And she's got tears in her eyes. And she's, you can, all we can see is her face, her hair, a shoulder, and a hand as she's about to go under the waves. And she says, I don't care. I'd rather sink than call Brad for help. And I think the juxtaposition would be the, her tears to the, to the waves of the ocean, which are oddly Japanese-like from the, uh, those famous Japanese um, art of the, the, the huge waves with the mountains in the background and the fishermen and in the boat keeping their composure and it was melodramatic and, um, and full of ben ray dots those the little dots that make up the coloring of the um, of the comic book panel and it was f taken from Tony Abruzzo's splash page from Run for Love and Secret Hearts number 83, November of 1962. And that was the source of it. Apparently, there was some uh, some legal problem too. But like, yeah, girls' romance stories. The romance comics, um, they, they, had, they had a heyday between uh, about 1947 and 1977. And it was... Basically, yeah, comic books aimed at girls, and uh, some of the some of the titles of the time. There was Romantic Hearts. There was Tessie the Typist from 1944, Timely Comics, which became which became Marvel, True Love Pictorial, uh, Secret Hearts. There's Pep Comics and Archie Comics. Archie Comics could be considered a um, a romance comic because you know he had the the classic love triangle with uh, Betty and Veronica, and there was also Jughead and Reggie who were also you know doing their darndest to land their loves too. There was uh, Diary Secrets, Young Romance, Young to Love, and that feature, and, and like ever these were just comic books that usually the, the big names would work on as well. It was just part of their. Um, it was just part of their workload. Like, there's a lot of um, Joe Simon and Jack Kirby attributed to young love <laughs> and true love problems. And um, along with superhero comic books, Western comic books, and anthropomorphic little uh, pigs and, and animals having uh, cute adventures, th these were the offerings in the Golden Age of Comics. And we have been talking about the golden age of DC Comics, and we're going to be talking about comic books every day for the rest of the year, so tune in tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern U.S., and we'll find out who we're talking about when we turn the page tomorrow. Please like and subscribe. I would love to earn your subscription. We make daily content here. We talk about cooking, spirituality, gratitude, bunnies, planets in the sky that you can see with your naked eye. We make daily content here, and it'll be a great addition to your YouTube day. So tune in and be part of it. Thank you so very much. God bless. Namaste. Good luck. And we will see you in the funny pages again tomorrow. Bye-bye.